I am so honored to be here as part of the alumni retreat. Um, my story started at Sierra Tucson. I was a client, a patient, whatever you want to call it. And um, so I'm really excited. The whole trajectory of my career changed after um, you know, going into treatment at Sierra Tucson. And I'm really excited to share with you a, the culmination of the past 15 years um, where I've been sober and in recovery from many things. And I'm excited to bring you into my kitchen tonight. Uh, this is in, to show you how I cooked my way back to health when I went into recovery 15 years ago, and it'll be November 19th, 2005. So we're coming up on that anniversary and we're celebrating Sober October. So this is perfect. And so I do wanna say off the bat, um, if I do refer to notes at any point, it's because we've I've got about 20 minutes to put out a lot of information to you and I don't wanna miss any important points. So, but if there's one point that I wanna get across tonight, it's it, rolling up your sleeves in the kitchen provides you and taking care of yourself in a nutritionally powerful way sets you up for a recovery that you probably couldn't have imagined before. Um, it can be game changing for your mood, your immunity, which is so important right now for relapse triggers, for sleep, and just for physical well-being. When, when I was at Sierra Tucson, I was in a lot of physical pain. I was dealing with substance abuse. And um, you know, when, once I started implementing how food could influence all of these different areas of my life, like I really started experiencing next level recovery. And I'm gonna tell you the story about that too. So, and, and to tell you, I was my first guinea pig. And I've worked with over a thousand clients and I've seen them recover in really beautiful and healing ways as well. So if you ever need any tips, come to What Would Lisa Eat and I'll, I'm happy to help you out. Um, you know, so I wanna share a little bit about my story tonight. I'm gonna do it in a really condensed way. Um, we're gonna talk about the intersection of food and recovery. And then I'm going to share three go-to recipes for you that are simple and delicious. So I hope you enjoy them. To start off about my story, so 15 years ago, I was a champagne drinking classical archeologist. As Tim mentioned, I had my master's degree from Oxford. I specialized in ancient food and wine production. I literally wrote my master's thesis on Dionysus, the Greek god of wine. And I was also a sommelier and I hosted a wine segment on television. So needless to say, I was obsessed. I was very invested in this life. And, you know, despite all of that though, I was imploding on the inside. And um, I, was, I was a hot mess. So despite, you know, what my resume may have said, I was not doing well on the inside. I was um, dealing with anxiety, depression, substance abuse, ADD, PTSD, autoimmune conditions um, that were really debilitating for me. Um, I, I dealt very severely with fibromyalgia and just general digestive issues. And then I could even I could go on even further, but that gives you a good round point of where I was. And then, as I mentioned, um, my aha moment came when I was at Sierra Tucson, and I remember I was walking the labyrinth you know, in the middle of the desert. And I just like it, like I really felt it in my heart that Prozac, Ritalin, um, wine, Vicodin, and even sugar just weren't cutting the bill anymore. Those were my coping mechanisms, but it wasn't working. And, you know, and I needed some serious spiritual fairy dust. And, you know, what I did was like, after I had a number of messy twists and turns, as we all know, part for the course in early recovery, just kind of life in general, right? Um, I realized that I needed to shift from being an archeologist of wine to discovering the archeologist within. And that's something that I like to share with all of my clients because we all have that opportunity to do that. And in my quest for healing and recovery, I drew upon my love of food 
and ancient wisdom and found that food is a beautiful window of entry to a higher level of recovery and well-being. And I like to think of cooking as meditating without meditating. It's a mindfulness practice in self-care. And if you're someone who resonates more with the practical than spiritual, I'd say it's immensely useful as well. Um, and this leads me to the food mood connection. And, um, you know, I, I really just want to discuss a little bit of the science behind it. And I'm going to put up a screen share for you in just a minute. Oh, sorry. I guess it's not working. So, oh, Tim, do you mind putting up the screen share? I'm just giving you the option. For giving me the, um, it's okay if we can't do it. So, um, so science shows us, and there's numerous studies to back this up, that how we nourish our bodies has a profound impact on our mood, our mental clarity, immune response, and physical and spiritual well being. And with that being said, I want to share some statistics with you. So, 70% of the cells. Um, in your gut make up your immune system alone. So it's really called your microbiome and it's about two to five pounds uh, in your gut and it carries your immune system. 90% of the serotonin and 50% of the dopamine that your brain uses is made there as well. So this is all happening in our gut. Um, and dopamine and serotonin are our feel good hormones to clarify. So when we go into recovery, our brains are actually starving for dopamine and you know some sources of dopamine that we may have used to get that dopamine high the drugs, alcohol, even a thousand likes on Instagram. That's what gets us to that bliss point. So when we get sober or when we go into recovery, like how are we going to like, get that delivery of that? high, right? So a lot of times what ends up happening is that we replace, we, we replace drugs, alcohol, or whatever behavior that gave us that high with Oreos and Ben and Jerry's. And these are really what I call low vibe foods and substances. Um, and you know, there's, as I mentioned, there are studies that actually show that these types of foods affect our brain in the same way as cocaine and morphine. So this is really serious stuff. Um, they have brain scans of people. And so when we feel out of balance, and we'll go to the next screen, um, so when we're feeling out of balance, what, how does that manifest? Emptiness, sadness, boredom. Wow, that's a, I don't know about you, but that's a recipe for relapse for me. That's a trigger. That's me wanting to call someone toxic. That's me wanting to find a substance to fill that need. But when we're it balanced, we're feeling more alert, a sense of well-being, creativity, um, able to concentrate. So going back to the dopamine, it's a really powerful neurotransmitter. And when those needs aren't being met, we hit up those low vibe substances, including caffeine, nicotine, sugar, processed foods, to help get to that bliss point, as I mentioned. Um, so for me, I'll be like, you know, it's progress, not perfection. Um, we all have our moments. So during COVID, I was with friends who were all drinking. I, you know, as I said, I'm 15 years sober, or just about. I hit up the, the vegan ice cream. <laughs> So, you know, so I really had to look at that and how it was enhancing um, how I was, you know, I was already feeling not so great during COVID, just with what was going on. And then in a related story, I got my first taste of the food mood connection when I, was, when I was about six months sober. I was at my recovery house and every other night I wound up on the floor looking up at the ceiling with big feelings and big tears after consuming these gooey chocolate, gluten-free chocolate chip cookies and brownies that I would make every other night. And then one evening, I remember the counselor who was on staff took me aside and she said, Lisa, we, we've got to talk about this pattern. Like you are just melting after eating all of this sugar. And it was the first time anyone had pointed that out to me. 
um, because as much of, as I have an addiction to drugs and alcohol, I also did to sugar, um, which makes sense. That was my first drug, I guess you could say. And so um, it was my new way of coping. And you know, I went back to that coping for a little while during COVID, but now I've had a reset and I feel a lot better. Um, so what was the trade-off? Low energy, it decreased my immunity, anxiety, depression, you know, the big tears, the big feelings, um, not so great sleep, and then waking up and feeling groggy the next day. And so that's no way to start the day or end the day. And I started having a really negative perception of myself. So to feel better, what did I do? I repeated the cycle. And that's why you know, the patterns were pointed out to me. So I'm not saying you can't enjoy coffee, a Sunday brunch, a cookie, a brownie. I'm just saying that this can affect our perception of life. It can affect our immune system. It can affect you know, us possibly picking up a drink, drug, or behavior as well. And not to mention the inflammation. And if you do deal with pain issues, or any kind of autoimmune disease, this really can wreak havoc with the inflammation. So bottom line, <laughs> eat foods as close to nature as possible. And, and I wanted to tell you that you are in luck tonight because you're probably thinking this is all great, but how do I apply it in my life? And so I've devoted the past 15 years to creating recipes that are high nutrition, easy to make, that support recovery, um, they'll help your sleep, your anxiety, depression, inflammation, allergies, brain fog. I hope I covered it all. Everything's gluten free. You can make it dairy free or non dairy free. You can make it paleo, keto, like plant based. I, I'm very flexible in my cooking. Um, and these recipes are also delicious. So I put together three recipes that I hope maybe become your go to. Um, and what's great is that a lot of these foods have crossover. So, you know, vitamin D, omega-3s, GABA, um, amino acids to boost serotonin and dopamine. I mean, you name it. And so I'm going to go through it now. So we're going to have um, sweet potato toast with avocado and egg. Um, let's see here. Coconut cauliflower rice with lime and cilantro. You can switch out the herb if you like. Um, and sauteed fruit with coconut yogurt. And then I'm also gonna include a fourth recipe, um, which I found to be really helpful for the evening when you're just craving something sweet. And that's a golden moon latte with some mood boosting um, and immune boosting spices. All right, so let's start with the sweet potato. So this is sweet potato toast. and this is, and I put it all together so you have a nice visual of it. Um, I took a Japanese sweet potato, and if you've never tried Japanese sweet potatoes, you can get them at Trader Joe's. So they are available, and they actually have tons of vitamin C in them, and they're gonna keep your skin glowing, so you've got that nice recovery glow going on. And it's really good um, in terms of antioxidants and your immune health for this time of year. So I sliced them to about, you know, a third, about a quarter to a third of an inch. And then I set the, the oven to 425, coated them with, just brushed on a little light coating, or you could even use spray of olive oil, put them in the oven for 30 minutes. And then you can decide how crispy you like them. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of avocado on. So this is, so the avocado has a lot of magnesium, which is great for PMS for women. Um, and it's also excellent as a brain food. Our brain is mostly fat. So very important. And then you can mash it up if you'd like. And if you are vegan or mostly plant-based, I like to put a little bit of nutritional yeast on which is an excellent source of B vitamins, which is great for anxiety. And then if you do eat eggs, eggs, um, it's an excellent source of protein. So I put some of this on. Oh, I'll put another egg on too, put one on this one. I mean, this is so delicious. So if you're so sick of avocado toast and you're sick of 
just toast in the morning or just bread. I and mean, this could, you could eat this any time of day. I'm probably going to have it for dinner, actually, because it's 6 o'clock on the East Coast. And I'm going to put a little bit of cilantro on. And voila, we're ready. All right, so the next recipe is coconut cauliflower rice. And I'm going to go over here. And I added plantains and bananas. And what I did was with the, co with the coconut cauliflower rice, I got this, I just picked up frozen cauliflower at Trader Joe's. It's a great staple to have around. Um, so that if you're ever in a pinch, a can of beans, some cauliflower rice, or even frozen jasmine rice, those are go-tos. And you can put some avocado on, um, some cilantro, very similar to the sweet potato toast. So, and let me tell you a little bit about the cauliflower rice. So with the cauliflower rice, I added plantains. And I just, I add a little bit of coconut milk, plantains, and just, it, with the frozen cauliflower rice, it literally takes five minutes. I have my meal, voila. And I'm just gonna put a little lime in. And some cilantro. Like I said, you can use any kind of herbs that you actually like, that, that you prefer, because I know cilantro isn't, doesn't work for everyone. And then we can also add some black beans, but the rice, but the egg would be really delicious as well. And so you have a really great meal. It's healthy. You could use chicken. You could use salmon. I mean, really, like tofu, beef. I mean, let your imagination go wild. I actually just had it plain last night and it was really delicious. Okay. And then I just want to remind you that I'm going to be sending all of these recipes by email. Actually, it will go through Tim. All right. So then the last recipe is something that you could have it for breakfast. You could have it as a snack. And I found a lot of my clients really enjoy in the evening when that, you know, maybe you've eaten well all day long and then it might be 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night, and you're like, oh my god, I just want a pint of ice cream, or I just want something to eat. And so I created this recipe, I call it um, the half moon bowl, but essentially it's sautéed fruit. So I buy a frozen bag of mixed berries from Trader Joe's or Whole Foods or wherever you shop, and what I do is, I, I'm going to bring it over. I stir fry it in a pan with a little bit of, with just a teaspoon of coconut oil and just saute it up over medium, medium high heat, add cinnamon, ginger, uh, you could add some alcohol free vanilla extract if you wanted to and I just saute it up until it's the texture that I like and it's like, it's like eating the inside of a pie. I mean, it is so delicious. And then I'm just gonna demonstrate the, I'm gonna, so I have some, for me, I really like plain coconut yogurt, unsweetened. If you like just regular Greek yogurt, or there's another, uh, I, I think they're making oat milk yogurt now, or almond, feel free to experiment. But you really don't need the extra sugar. And so I just put it in a bowl. And then what I discovered recently too, is that you can actually uh, use a, I mean, I don't know about regular sour cream, but you could use a cashew milk sour cream and actually really delicious. All right, so now I'm gonna put, then you put the berries on. So you're getting these really delicious antioxidants. You're getting the fat and the, protein from the yogurt, and then I like to add some 
hemp seeds, which are great omega-3s for your brain. And then some walnuts. So what, is the, what are the shape of walnuts? Walnuts are the shape of a brain. All right. Okay, so I can't wait to have this. <laughs> it's so delicious. And then you could also always put a little drizzle of honey on, and I always recommend raw honey so you can get all the nutritional benefits. And you know, and I, and I just want to say that one of the things that everything has energy, right? Like the food you eat has energy, the um, how you have your kitchen set up has energy. So meaning that if you want to help decrease anxiety and you want to lift your mood, like making this a practice for yourself is so key. And like, so if there's scraps around or packaging, like take that off the counter. It does, my kitchen doesn't always look like this pristine, but the point is, is that make your workspace workable for you because that's going to help bring down cortisone levels. And God knows we all need that these days. So I wanna open it up to questions. And, um, and then one last thing, hydrate your body. That is so key. If you're feeling irritated, frustrated, hungry, sleepy, you may be dehydrated. And there's all different ways that you can get water into your body. It's drinking it straight up. Um, it's creating like a fruit flavored water or cucumber water. You could also eat your water. So remember like grapes and cucumbers and any fruit or vegetable that has a lot of water density to it is another way that you can get water into your body. But, all right. So I'd love to... People want to know recipes. You know what? So the recipes, all of these recipes are on my site. So on Instagram, if you go to what would Lisa eat, you will find the recipes. If you go to whatwouldlisaeat.com, You'll also find the recipes you can actually put in a search. And then um, we will be emailing them to you. Um, I'm also going to provide a clean swap guide for you. So if you are craving sugary cereal, I'll give you an option. If you're craving pizza or french fries, um, I, I, mean, I have a bunch of samples for you on what you could eat instead. And remember, it's this is a practice, it's not a performance. So I want you to go really easy on yourselves that way. Oh, how do I cook the plantain? So what I do is, I you can use a plantain, or if you're, you don't have plantains, you can just use a banana. And so I slice them up about, a, I guess about a quarter of an inch or half an inch thick, about, I would say half an inch thick. And then, so you just dice them. So if you could dice a banana or dice a plantain, and then you literally just put it in the, the cauliflower rice and the coconut milk that are steaming on the stove. Okay, do we have any other questions? All right, so I have a question for you. So I wanna know what you've all been doing, um, one, since you've been sober in recovery, but also what have you been doing over the past six or seven months? Are you cooking at home? Are you learning new recipes? Are you mostly ordering delivery? Do you need a reset? Okay. While they're thinking about that, you have a question. Oh, I have another question. All right. What would you suggest for women that have food, sweet, salty craving prior to their cycle? Okay, that's a really great question. So, repeat it, repeat it. Okay, so the, the question is, are there, um, what would I recommend for women who are craving sweet, salty right before their period? So one is this, um, the half moon bowl that I just made with the sauteed fruit and, you know, maybe try the cashew milk sour cream. That might be really great. Uh, or just even just a plain yogurt. And then um, on my website and um, on Instagram, I have some treat recipes. So one is a Reese's peanut butter cup style cup. <laughs> it's a uh, cashew and almond milk, but you can swap in peanut butter. And then I also have some, I think you might be learning about them tomorrow, not through me, but through someone else, but energy balls can be really great as well. And then I also love to make 
a Mexican hot chocolate. So I use raw cacao, honey, and um, almond, unsweetened almond milk, and then add a little bit of spice to it. Oh my God, so delicious. So I hope that's helpful and I'm happy to talk further with you. I do have a website called foodbodysoul.net and that's where it has more um, coaching and consulting. And you can also access what would Lisa eat through there. Any tips on getting motivated? Okay, any tips on getting motivated to cook? Okay, so if you're familiar with the concept of play the whole tape through, and this is something that I learned very on in recovery, and it was if I take this action, positive or negative, how am I going to feel? So if I buy that frozen rice at Trader Joe's, whether it's cauliflower rice or just regular brown rice or white rice, seriously, I, I don't care which one you choose. And I have those, and I heat up those can of beans. How am I going to feel the next day? And I, that's what I had to do when I started meditating. I, for me, it was, I couldn't think so much in, I mean, they say stay in the present, stay in the moment, but I really started having to play the whole tape through and thinking about, all right, if I meditate, I remember someone saying to me that when they meditated one day, it had a direct effect on how they felt the next day. And I thought, wow, that's... That's pretty profound. And, but I always remembered that. I mean, this is, this is when I was still in my recovery house almost 15 years ago. And so, and I say the same thing for cooking. Um, play the whole tape through and know that like, you're honoring yourself for the first time in your life, you know, possibly. Okay, somebody's wanted a suggestion for healthy snacks. Okay, healthy snacks. All right, so, <coughs> excuse me. I would start with, I hope you're drinking water. I know I just said it, I'm gonna say it again. I hope you're drinking water. Fresh fruit, that's like my number one go-to. And what I found is that it takes, it only takes three days for our taste buds to change. So if you can give yourself that three-day reset, like if you're used to eating more processed foods and on that third day of giving yourself a reset, an apple is going to taste sweeter than it's ever tasted in your life probably. And then pairing it with some almond butter or having some nuts. And then, you know, there's, there's actually, I wouldn't say eat a lot of popcorn by any means, but there are some, there's a great popcorn company called um, Bjorn Corn, and they toss it with this nutritional yeast that I mentioned to you, it's a terrible name, but my seven-year-old son can't get enough of it. I mean, every person I talk to who tries it, they go crazy for it. And I'll write it down for you. It's called Bjorn Corn. And seaweed snacks. So, uh, well, actually, I'm going to get a couple for you. So, kidney snacks, rice cakes. This is my... So, this, this is my snack drawer. <laughs> um, I have Simple Mills almond flour crackers. You can serve those, you can have those with hummus or just plain, they're really delicious. Um, these are dang coconut chips. I, you don't even, these are lightly salted, you don't need to get the sweetened ones, you can, and then you can put this coconut on top of some soup, a salad, you can put it in the half moon bowl that I made. Um, rice cakes, you can put an avocado, tomato, anything you like on something like this. Um, give me, these are the gimme seaweed snacks. These really satisfy that salty crunch. And then there's a company called Brad's um, and he has raw crackers. They're on the pricey side, but they deliver high nutrition and it satisfies that salty, I just want to crunch something. And then, um, and then also, I love raw chocolate. So there's a lot of great companies out there now. So there's um, Elements Truffles, there's Fine and Raw, um, there's a bunch of others. I'll write those down for you as well. And so you can order all of that online these days through Thrive Market, through Amazon, 
Um, if there's delivery in your area, probably through Peapod or Whole Foods, all of these things are, that's what, so, oh, and then another great snack that I ran out of, it's, they're called Raw Crunch Bars. Look them up, they're great as well. Okay, do we have more questions? Yeah, we do. Uh, uh, try different meal kits. Are there any you suggest? Okay, meal kits. So, so the question was, what about meal kits? And I think there are some good ones out there. Um, I, my concern about some of the meal kits is the amount of sodium, um, because that that can be that can be very bloating, very inflammatory, and if you have a heart condition, it's no bueno. So we don't want that. Um, there are some great meal delivery services that I, there's one called Provenance Meals that's really excellent. Um, they're based out of Brooklyn, New York. I believe that they, I believe that they deliver around the country now. And then meal kits, um, Purple Carrot, um, Hello Fresh, uh, Blue Apron. Just really take a look at the sodium content with a lot of those. And and the, they're a great starting point. So if you wanna get excited about cooking and you wanna start trying some new recipes, you can always go to What Would Lisa Eat? <laughs> but other than that, because I, I actually am writing a cookbook, so that will be coming out in 2021. Um, so stay tuned. But other than that, I mean, it it gets people excited. Like my mother-in-law, she like loved eating meat, 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 pasta, 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 bread, bread, bread. And she started, she started ordering purple carrot and it's just like transformed her cooking. And she just, she comes up with all these amazing plant forward, plant driven recipes where the the meat or the chicken or the fish becomes more of the garnish as opposed to the centerpiece. Uh, protein is really important for people in recovery. I find that it really helps with the mental acuity, the mood balance, and blood sugar levels. Okay, the next question. If sugar and overeating is your method to cope, what is, pref what is the preferred diet? Okay, so if if sugar, if sugar and overeating, and is, overeating your method to cope. is your method to cope, is your method to cope. What is a preferred diet? To okay. Lose weight? What is a preferred diet to lose weight? That's a good question because I really do believe in bio individuality, and I believe in, like, for example, I'll get, I'll use myself as the example. Um, what works for me doesn't necessarily work for a friend of mine who is like, who's completely vegan. And she binged a lot, she ate a lot of processed foods, and going completely vegan has been life-changing for her. I have tried going completely vegan and it actually increased my um, my cravings for sugar. Like I couldn't get enough chocolate. I'm all about dark chocolate, like, particularly raw cho chocolate. Uh, but I just, like, I was, I was substituting, like not having any animal protein for more sugar. So I think it's finding out. I mean, I'm happy to chat with you offline, but I think it's finding out what works best for you and and starting to eat more regularly scheduled meals, and then having a plan for, okay, nighttime is my hardest time. What do I really need during that time? You know, do I need to set up a Zoom call with someone I care about? Do I need, do I, should I hop on a meeting? You know, maybe that would be helpful. Or I'm serious, like, sauteing up a bag of frozen fruit or fresh fruit. If you have the fresh berries, you can also use apples or pears, you know, whatever you like, and sauteing that up and getting that pie-like consistency that's not going to derail your goals and they're not going to derail your mood 
is going to be so beneficial. So I had a client once who ate seven fruit flavored yogurts a day and she was crashing so terribly, like her mood, her ability to focus, um, she felt she was gaining weight. And so rather than go cold turkey and set her up for something that she wasn't going to be able to meet, because that's really hard, right? Um, she, what we did was we started substituting um, half, half, we take half a container of fruit flavored yogurt and half a container of unsweetened plain yogurt and mixing it together. And she was amazed by how delicious that actually was. And by the time we stopped working together, she was having plain yogurt with some sauteed fruit or fresh berries. Um, if she wanted a little something sweet, a little drizzle of honey, nuts. But it's, it's having making sure that you're getting an adequate amount of fat too. So the walnuts, the hemp seeds, the avocado, all of that is going to be so important for your mood and your brain function. And is right now, if you're eating a lot of sugar, if you're overeating, your digestive flora, your gut flora is probably in overdrive right now. And that as a result is going to be driving your brain up here because we really do have two brains. And in the embryonic state, they're actually connected. And then as we grow, it, there's the vagus nerve between the two. And, but there's actually more communication that goes from the gut to the brain than the brain to the gut. So really fixing that part and really healing that part of your body is probably going to have a huge impact on eventually helping you lose weight and um, not be able, you know, not eat as much sugar. So it's because the more sugar we have, like if I have dessert one night in a row, I, I try not to have it the next night. And I'll tell you why it's not because I'm trying to like lose weight, restrict or anything like that. It's because I know if I do it two or three nights in a row at the same time, it's going to kick in. It's going to kick in as I have an addict type personality and it's going to kick in and I'm going to start craving it at that same time every single day. So I have to come up with substitutes. Okay, we have another question. Is the Japanese sweet potato cooked? Okay, is, yes, the Japanese sweet potato is cooked. If I left that out, I totally apologize. That's a big point. So um, what I do is I coat the, so I just brush on or spray on some olive oil and then I put it in the oven for at, at 425 for about 30 minutes. And you may like it crispier than that. You may like it not as crispy as that. So just, and every oven's a little different. Do you happen to know the calorie output for the recipes? Do I know the calorie output for the recipes? I do not. There are some programs that you can use. Um, for me, I found that calorie counting has not been helpful for me, but again, every case is individual. Uh, I do know that there are some, I think if you Google nutritional information, um, oh, there, there are some programs. I, I'll look that up. Next question. I've gone vegetarian and love cooking and eating close to the source. I know that I do not get great protein. What do you recommend? Okay, so this person um, is eating mostly vegetarian and eating as close to the source as possible. So real food coming from the earth. Um, what to do about protein sources. So greens actually have a lot of protein. Um, Nuts, seeds, like chia seeds and hemp seeds are great sources. Um, you know, tofu and tempeh are good sources too, um, beyond meat. But I would limit that because just because one high, with the beyond meat, I mean, the beyond sausages, I have to say, are really amazing. Um, a lot of people love the hamburgers as well. Again, you just have to be careful about the sodium. Um, and then 
There are some really, and then, oh, with the tofu and the tempeh, soy, there's, you know, you just, you just have to, like, talk to your doctor about soy. For some people, it's okay. Other people, it can be really bloating, and um, hormonally, it doesn't really work well for them. So I would just, just look into that a little bit. And then there's some really great protein um, supplements. So I'll pull another one out for you. Uh, so, so for example, this is from Elements Truffles, and it's a vegan protein powder, and it's chai spice. And I mean, you can add this to like a smoothie, you can add this to overnight oats, and it's a, it's a really great source, so you're getting the benefits of raw cacao, which have so many. I mean, if you have any reactions to chocolate, definitely try the raw chocolates and the raw cacao. Um, I mean, this has, uh, this is Ayurvedic in, in in their philosophies. Um, this company actually, they meditate before they go into production every day. And it's really incredible. Like I said, everything has energy. And so, and this just offers a really nice, but if you find high quality protein sources, you can do that. Um, other protein sources, there's a, an ancient grain from Africa called Fonio. And there's a company called Yolele Foods. I'll include this information as well. And it's an ancient grain that is gluten-free and high in protein. And you can make so many things with it. You can use it as a substitute for rice. You can use it as um, in baking. I mean, it's, it's really incredible. I, I do have a, on what would Lisa eat, I do have a recipe that includes that. And then again, like I said, I mean, I, I would def there are a lot of then beans. Um, some people don't do well with legumes. So in that case, if you're vegetarian and you're an ovo vegetarian, you can get protein sources through eggs as well. It is a perfect protein. Okay. Do we have any other questions? No, but we have some comments. Okay. I'd people, love people have said that they are cooking at home. Oh, you're cooking the at feedback, home. cooking at home, and that um, so uh, some of you are cooking from home, and they're looking. For, and someone said, "Young, looking forward to the replacement list." Thank you, Lisa. Oh, I'm I'm happy to send the replacement list. Yes. And um, and someone else said they've been cooking vegan since January 2018 and loving it. I make three recipes over the weekend to cover my week. I've been getting my recipes from Pinterest. I have kept up my cooking and eating vegan throughout the last seven months. I have found so many sweets to eat that are healthy. Thank you for your presentation. So this is all the people you're asking. Oh, fantastic. So I'm so glad that you're finding recipes and that you're cooking from home. There's so many benefits to it. It really can become part of your self-care practice. Um, as I said, like I cooked my way back to health. I, I was in a really broken place. Um, just the physical pain from the fibromyalgia, the depression, the anxiety, the poor sleep, the digestion. Um, and it, it's even helped with the ADD. And not to say that someone might not still need supplemental medication, it's just that it's still going to improve your overall well-being and help mitigate some symptoms. It, it just um, it feels so good. And then, um, Tim, how are we doing for time? Good to go. Good to go. Perfect. Okay, terrific. Yeah. And so, I, you know, I just want to wrap up by saying that, um, you know, this has been such a pleasure. It's really an incredible experience to have been at Sierra Tucson um, as a client. And, you know, here I am, you know, coming back as a professional and how, you know, transformative it was for my life. And I want to offer all of you that same hope. And then also, 
Um, I want to offer you all, I'm going, I have a cooking in recovery four week series coming up and I'm going to be offering a special pricing for attendees of the Sierra Tucson alumni retreat this weekend. So stay tuned about that. Um, I'm going to send, Tim will have the information. That's great. Oh, we have two more questions. questions I think that sound that are important, and then maybe you can take them offline or not. But one is, do you have recommended sugar replacement for diabetics? Sugar replacements for diabetics. Okay. okay. All the right. other one is, um, if one struggles with restricting their diet, what tips do you have for still eating healthy meals? Sounds like okay. side conversations. Right. You know, I would love to have side conversations with the people who asked about um, creating healthy meals if you if you're still restricting um, and then also sugar replacements for diabetics for when we're looking at sugar replacements I always say like go to like plant-based sources um, so I'm going to go back to the sauteed fruit and and we can explore that together further as well so I'm happy to talk with everyone offline Thank you so much for having me. This has been a, an incredible experience and I've loved connecting with you all tonight. Thank you for your comments and questions. And Tim, thank you so much for having me.